This will be a memorable day in every life in Jesus' name. Let's pray before the message. Father, we thank you. We thank you for everything that has happened already. You have enriched our hearts. You have blessed our hearts. You have blessed everyone already. And we pray, Lord, what comes now will be a blessing to everyone in Jesus' name. Today is a special day for every one of us. Spectacular, supernatural, divine intervention, impartation for everyone. Make it so in every life in Jesus' name. Give us something wonderful, something unforgettable. Make an impact in every life. Well, thank you because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. We're coming to Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. I'm reading from verses 12, 13, and 14. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God and have become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. As we come together on this special Sunday for a special service and for supernatural divine impartation, I want to look at these verses with you and I pray that what you hear what you learn will be a blessing to everyone in Jesus' name. God's word, not man's word, is the source and the foundation. God's word is the basis of prevailing supernatural power in our lives, in our families, in our ministry. As we think about God's word in the presentation of today, in those verses I've read to you, God's word is food. God's word is nourishment. Food for our spirit, for our soul, for our body. Nourishment for our mind. Nourishment for our thoughts. Nourishment for our strength. It's the one that supplies health, supplies joy, grants us happiness, gives us assurance. It is the word that brings faith, and through that faith, we're able to possess all things that we need. It's through this word we have holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. The word grants us wisdom. The word grants us power for living gives us strength for our journey towards heaven and as you think about the food it talks about number one milk that's what we start with a child comes to this world there's water there's milk and then as you continue to grow there is meat like the natural food for the body we must take it regularly. The milk and the meat of the world must be regular in our lives. Not something that you take once a week. Think about it. If you eat only once a week, how would you grow? And if you drank only milk that once a week, how do you grow? But if you're going to grow, you take the food regularly to be strong, to be powerful, to be unconquerable. 
we must eat well. Eat well. What does it mean to eat well? Number two, eat it. Take it in. The same thing with the word of God. As you hear the word of God, it's not enough to have the milk there. Appreciating it, qualifying it, describing it, learning about it, and never take it. The very first thing you do, or the bread of life, or the milk of the word, or the meat of the word, take it in. Number two, when we eat, you chew that food. Because it is the chewing of the food that will make it to mix with all the nutrients in your body, in your mouth. That will make you to take it in and benefit from that food. Crush it. Chew it. The same thing, you know, as we hear the word of God, it's not enough that I've heard the word of God. I must chew it. I must apply it. I must analyze it. I must break it down, compare it with my life. That is what makes the food you are eating you know, and the word you are hearing beneficial unto you. Number three, there's this word, masticate. Masticate is still very near to the chewing. You don't just uh, put it in your mouth and swallow. You masticate. And the same thing with the word of God. You meditate on the word. You make it personal. You hear a promise in the word of God. Meditate. Make it personal. You hear something. A prophetic word. A promised note that God has given you. You masticate and you meditate. And it is that. Ruminating it. Pondering over it, thinking about it, let it sink in your body so that all the nutrients can get to all the veins and all the vessels, blood vessels in your body. That's what makes it beneficial in your life. Meditate, make it personal. Have you seen children? You give them milk, it gets to their mouth, they spew it out. You give the milk again, they spew it out, and that does not allow them to get the very best from that food. That means then, number four, swallow it. Swallow it. You're going to benefit from the word. You're going to benefit from the spiritual meal and meat the Lord is giving you, and it's going to do something in your life. Perform a miracle in your life. Bring transformation in your life, you must let it sink in. That is, you swallow it. You sink it in. It gets to your brain. It gets to your mind. It gets to your consciousness. It gets to your very heart because you allow it to sink in. And those uh, who are nutritionists and uh, those who are dietitians, they tell us something. Number five, uh, take breakfast every day. When you are not fasting, take breakfast every day. That means if you are going to benefit from the word, here is the milk of the word, here is the meat of the word. Start your day with the word. Start your day with the word. It's not enough to just say, when I go to church, when I go to the Bible study, I'll hear the word. You take breakfast every day and you start the day with the word of God. Number six, you keep to balanced diet. You keep to balanced diet. You cannot just be reading about salvation, salvation, salvation every day. You cannot just be talking about healing, healing, healing every day. You cannot be talking of success, success, success every day. A balanced diet that from this area, justification. From that area, there is transformation. From that area, there is holiness. From that area, there's the power of the Holy Ghost. From this area, there is healing. From that area, there's deliverance. Everything in the world, a balanced diet of the Word of God. You feed on all the world, and you feed on different parts of the world. Number seven, exercise. Exercise. As you take in the word, what if you're just 
ate and slept, ate and slept, ate and slept, the word of the meat you are taking will not be beneficial. But you eat, you get up. And as you get up, you move here, you move there, you move there. You are exercising yourselves. It is the eating and the exercise, the exercise and the eating that will sweat it out. And you do something with the food you are taking. That's what makes it beneficial. Exercise. Use the strength you gain through the world. Use the strength you gain through the food you are eating. What does that mean? Exercise in the spiritual. Evangelize sinners. Evangelize sinners. When you take in the word, it benefits you. Then you look for sinners and you give that to them. Evangelize sinners. Number two, what if you eat and you never went to the toilet? You eat, you never went to empty whatever it is that came in, you will be sick. You will not be strong. There will be another major problem because you eat and you never empty it out. Number two, empty cell. Empty cell out of your system. You are hearing the word number one in the exercise. Exercise. After the food you have taken, you evangelize sinners. Number two, you empty self. Number three, you encounter situations. You see, we don't dodge situations. Once you have eaten, that's why you have eaten. Strength has come. Power has come. Some authority has come. Some confidence has come because you have eaten. And therefore, with the strength that that food has given you, you encounter situations. You endure challenges. A person who has eaten is not a person that is staying indoors all the time. My friend, why are you indoors all the time? There's so many challenges over there. That's why we're eating, so that the food you have taken will give you strength and courage to face whatever challenge may be outside there. Endure challenges. Number five, edify saints. You have eaten, you have taken in the word. I've eaten, I've got miracle, I've got healing. I've got a testimony. You know, when you eat, you also exercise. And that exercise brings you to the point you edify saints. Number six, evict strangers. You know, you are a landlord. That house belongs to you. And because you have not eaten for days and for weeks or a week, and strangers come, and they occupy your house. And as landlord, you don't have the strength to do anything about it. But now, you are getting well. Somebody there is saying, now you are getting well. I can't hear your amen. And now that are well and strong. And you take of the spiritual food. Hey, now you get up. And as you get up, you evict you eject, you expel strangers, squatters that are not allowed to be there. When you eat the word of God, when you take in the word of God, it gives you so much courage and so much conviction and so much power. Any stranger, any squatter that came to live inside your body, you eject them. And today, we eject every stranger from your system in Jesus' name. And you will close the door because you have taken the food and because you are strong. You close the door against every stranger, against every evil spirit, against any squatter that may be there. Number seven, exemplify strength. Not weakness. When you are eating, if you are eating the word of God and the word of God you are eating is going to make you deeper, give me a good amen. It's going to take you higher. Give me another amen. It's going to make you run faster. Give me a good amen. 
you exhibit and you exemplify strength. When you are taking the word of God, you are not like a weakling. You are not like somebody who cannot stand. You are not like somebody, I'm waiting for pastor to do this for me. I'm waiting for counselor to do this for me. I'm waiting for advisor to do this for me. I'm waiting for father to do this for me. I'm waiting for a mommy to do this for me. You take the word of God and now you are going to exhibit. You are going to exemplify strength in your life in Jesus' name. This word will make you strong. And the word you are hearing today will make you strong in Jesus' name. Any weakness in your life, any deformity in your life, and anything that ought not to be there, today you are free in Jesus' name. I am free. I said I am free. The word that is coming to you will make you free in Jesus' name. I'm talking to you today on prevailing power through the ministry of the word. Prevailing power. If we're going to prevail, if we're going to overcome, if we're going to be conquerors and more than a conqueror, we need the word, the ministry of the word, the message that the word is bringing to us. Prevailing power through the ministry of the word. I'm dividing this message to three parts. Number one, Desiring and drinking the sincere milk of the world. Desiring and drinking the sincere milk of the world. Number two, dominion through digesting the strong meat for its warriors. Dominion through digesting the strong meat for its warriors. As we're going back home today, no enemy will conquer you anymore. No evil will conquer you anymore. You're going out, and as you take the strong meat of the word, you will be strong. I will be strong. And the power of the Lord will work mightily in every life in Jesus' name. Dominion through digestion. The strong meat for his warriors. Number three, delight in the diet. Delight in the diet of spiritual manner for your own welfare. You delight in the diet. This is a special diet, the diet of the world, and the diet of spiritual manner for your own welfare. You take your welfare out of the hands of anyone, of everyone, and you say, in my personal life, for my own welfare, I determine my de destiny. With God, you determine your destiny. Satan will not determine your destiny. Enemies will not determine your destiny. Powers of darkness will not determine your destiny. If you have been saying, they will not let me succeed today, I cancel that word from your mouth. They will not help me. They will not let me get to where I intended to go. Everywhere the Lord has ordained, you will get to, you will get there in Jesus' name. Your own welfare spiritual welfare, personal welfare, family welfare, and uh, professional welfare, your welfare is now in your hand. You delight in the diet of spiritual manner for your own welfare. I see somebody succeeding there. I see somebody that, you know, you've been leaning on others. They tied you down and they chained you down. All those chains are broken. All those fetters are destroyed. And the place you wanted to get to, I wanted to get there. I'm looking at each and all that I said I will do from the beginning of the year. I'm not, they, they, they don't allow me. They don't permit me. They are hindering me. They clear out of the way. And announce to all those people that have been standing in your way, get out of the way. The champions are coming. The victors are coming. The overcomers are coming. The conquerors are coming. We take 
our destiny out of their hand is now in your hand. I said, it's now in your hand. I will get there. I said, I will get there. I said, I will get there. You will get there in Jesus' name. Number one, desiring and drinking the sincere milk of the word. Desire it and drink it. I'm looking at that Hebrews again. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12. It says, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one should teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And I become, and I become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. Then it says in verse 13, for everyone that uses milk, at least we have to start there. Everyone that uses milk, we have to begin there. Everyone that drinketh milk, that's where we begin. Everyone that uses or drinketh milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. I'm looking at First Peter, First Peter, chapter two. In First Peter, chapter two, I'm reading verse two. It says in verse two. It says, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word. Desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. But you know, before we can have that desire and drink properly, look at verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice, and then it says, all girl and hypocrisies, and envies, and evil speaking as newborn babes, then desire. There's something to empty from your life. There's something to get out and push out from your system. It says, as you come to the Lord, are you expecting the impartation? Are you expecting the intervention? Are you expecting the influence and inspiration of the Bible, uh, of the Word of God? It says you lay aside how many forms of malice? Tell me out aloud. All malice, malice. I won't talk to them. They are pregnant with anger. They are pregnant with animosity. They are pregnant with annoyance. It says lay that aside. And then it says, and all guile, all forms of deception, all guile, empty yourself of that, all hypocrisies, pretending to be who we are not. You know, we, we appear holy and yet we're unholy. We appear pure and yet we're impure. It says all that hypocrisy, we lay that aside, and all envy, all jealousy, all canal comparison between him and her, all canal comparison between me and them, all canal comparison between yourself and other people, all envies and all evil speaking, lay them aside. Today, the Lord will cleanse us. Today, the Lord will wash us. And the, today, the Lord will purge every one of us in Jesus' name. And then, and then, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. You know, we need to have this milk of the word inside us, in our heart, in our spirit, in our mind. And if the milk of the word is going to do any good in our lives, number one, desire each don't despise each when you hear the word of god desire each don't despise each number two drink each don't just display each you know i know about the word and i know the doctrines of the word and i can display it to you don't display drink everything you have heard Everything you are hearing, you desire, you drink. Number three, decide. Don't deceive yourself. Decide 
Don't deceive yourself. Be a doer of the word. If anybody be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he deceives himself. Decide. Don't deceive yourself. Number four, do it. Don't delay. Do it. Don't delay. When you see, when you have, when you are presented with the milk of the word, you do it immediately. Somebody says, that's simple. If it's simple, why didn't you do it? That's easy. It was easy. Why didn't you do it? And somebody says, that's fundamental. That's basic. That's even like, you know, primary school knowledge. If it's like primary school knowledge, why didn't you do it? Do it and don't delay. Number four, demonstrate it. Don't dodge. Demonstrate that you are hearing the word of God. Demonstrate you have heard the word of repentance. Demonstrate it. You have heard the word on recitation. Demonstrate it. You have heard the word of righteousness. Demonstrate it. You have heard the word of faith. Above all, taking the shield of faith. That we will be able to quench all the funny darts of the wicked. Demonstrate it. Don't dodge it. Six, declare it. Don't decline. Now that you have the word, every place you go, you'll declare this word. In the village, you'll declare the word. I said you'll declare the word. In your community, you will declare the word. The word will be in your mouth. Any temptation that comes, you will say, it is written. Declare it. Anybody that you meet, any fellow that you meet, any neighbor that you meet, you declare the word and you are not declining. Number seven, defend it, don't dilute it. It's milk. It's milk. Don't pour water there and dilute it and make it so worthless and so useless. You defend it earnestly contending for the faith, which was once delivered unto the saints. You are not diluting it. Look at that word again. It says in uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the world. That was the purpose. That I said was the purpose. That everybody tell me. If you want to grow, I say tell me. If this is going to be applicable for you, where are you? I can't want to hear your voice. That she may grow thereby. What makes us grow? Number one, you grow in grace because you desire the milk and you drink that milk. Number two, you grow in faith. All problems in life are solved by your faith in Christ. Because if you can believe, how many things are possible? All things are possible to him that believeth. You grow in grace, number one. You grow in faith because faith comes by the word. And hearing by the word of God, you grow in conviction. You grow in conviction. There are some people who tell us, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. For how many years have you been a Christian? I've been a Christian for 15, 17 years. What's your conviction? He has no conviction. Everything that comes makes him to compromise. Everything that comes makes him to be fearful. Everything that comes makes him to give up. He's always tired, always tired. But you know, if you're taking in the milk of the word of God, you will grow. And you are going to grow. You grow in grace. You grow in faith. You grow in conviction. Also, number four, you grow in courage. You grow in courage. I'm telling you, there is nobody that is always intimidated, always afraid, always weak, always trembling, always fearful, that can climb to the top of the mountain before him. If you're going to climb, I see somebody there that is going to climb. I said, I see somebody there that is going to climb. This mountain will not stop your journey. This challenge will not stop your journey. And if you're going to make anything in life, you need to have courage, boldness, fearlessness. And I pass that spirit of the conqueror unto every one of you today in Jesus' name. Desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby, that she may grow in grace that you may grow in faith, 
that she may grow in conviction, that she may grow in courage. Every mountain before you will vanish away. And I'll say, I'm afraid of these villagers. I'm afraid of this community. I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of that. All that will vanish away in your life in Jesus' name. And then number five is to grow in strength. That's why we take the milk of the word. That's why we would eat food so that your strength will come up. Your strength will rise up. You'll be higher today than you were yesterday. You'll be higher tomorrow than you, than you are today. The Lord will do it in your life in Jesus' name. You know, if, if you're really having quiet time, if you're really having personal devotion, family devotion every day, and you're saying, we desire the milk, and we drink the milk, and we digest the milk, and we take it in, and we make it personal, why are you not going in strength? Why are you not, why are you weak this year like you were weak last year? Something has to change. I said something has to change. We cannot continue like this. You cannot continue like this. You will grow in strength. You will grow in victory. I said you'll grow in victory. Desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. You grow in victory. Number seven. Number one is you grow in faith, in grace. Number two, you grow in faith. Number three, you grow in conviction. Number four, you grow in courage. Number five, you grow in strength. Number six, you grow in victory. Number seven, you grow in breakthrough. 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 And today, if you've never seen breakthrough before, breakthrough has come. Blessing has come. The supernatural has come. It will be fulfilled in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 3. In First Corinthians chapter 3, I'm reading here from verse 2. First Corinthians chapter 3. And we're looking at verse 2. It tells us in chapter 3, verse 2, First Corinthians, it says, I have fed you with milk. I have fed you with meal. Look at that. I have fed you with meal. Look up here. Look up here. Paul, the apostle, said to the Corinthians, he said, you know what I've given you? All I've given you is meal. And yet, he said, you come not behind any other church in the gifts of the Spirit. Think about that. Those people understood, even in the basic element of the milk that is given them, they had salvation, they had sanctification. Look at chapter 1, verse 30. Look at chapter 1, verse 30. It says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who is of God, made unto us wisdom righteousness, sanctification, redemption. And he said, all I've given you is milk. And through that milk, they had justification. Through that milk, they had righteousness. Through that milk, they had sanctification. Look at verse 7, verse 7 of chapter 1. So that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, that's the milk I've given you. The result of the milk I've given you is that you're saved, you're sanctified, you're filled with the Holy Ghost, and you have the gifts of the Spirit. Your own time has come. I said your time has come. No more complaints in your mouth. I am not saved yet because all I have is the milk of the word. That's what gets you saved. I'm not sanctified yet. I want somebody to come and tell me something greater than the simple, spiritual, and the sincere milk of the word. That's what they had, and they were sanctified and holy. I'm not filled with the Holy Ghost yet because all I had was the sincere milk of the word. Maybe when they tell me something deeper, something higher, something greater, I will have the baptism in the Holy Ghost. That's all they had. 
Paul the Apostle said, all I've given you, Corinthians, is the milk of the word. And yet through that milk of the word, you have salvation. Thank God I have salvation. And then sanctification, thank God I'm sanctified. And then the baptism and the power and the endearment of the Holy Ghost. It will happen in your life. Point number two now, dominion through digesting the strong meat for his warriors. The strong meat for his warriors. You know, you'll pity the people that any little problem they have, a mosquito bite, they run to prayer warriors. Today, you'll be the warrior yourself. A conquering warrior. Yeah. I said a conquering warrior. Yeah. A victorious warrior. Yeah. An overcoming warrior. Yeah. You know, you'll pity the people who have been in church for 10 years. And any little stomach problem, they run to prayer warriors. Any little dream of a blanket tying their legs. And then because their blanket or their cover cloth is tying their legs, they'll be dreaming on the other side that somebody is uh, putting chain on them. And they say, I'm in bondage, I'm in bondage. And then they rise up, they're sweating. And they run to prayer warriors. It's the people that have not grown. I pity the pastor that will run to prayer warriors because they have a little problem. A PG that leader that runs to prayer warriors or sends the children to prayer warriors. My wife go to the prayer warriors. Ah, after all these years, power will come in your life. Yeah. Anointing that breaks every yoke will come into your life. Yeah. That anointing will enter inside you will saturate your life. You'll not be running here and there. All the people will be running to you in Jesus' name. Hey, look at Hebrews. Look at Hebrews. I'm reading Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 5. I'm reading to you from verse 14. But strong meat belongs to them that are full age. Strong meat. Strong meat belong to them that are full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Strong meat. Somebody shout, strong meat. That's a spiritual diet of men and women like Enoch. Men and women like Abraham. Like Moses, those people, that's what they had. They were not just taking, you know, simple milk all the time. Abraham, he was strong in faith. What made him strong in faith? He had been taking some strong meat. And Enoch, by faith, he was translated. Why did that happen in his life when everybody around, when they were dying? And yet, that man will not die. What happened to Elijah? What kind of faith did he have? What kind of authority did he have? It's the authority of the people that have been taking some strong meat. How about Daniel? That will not compromise. How about Daniel? That spent a whole night in the lion's den. And no lion in the den of Babylon could touch that man. And no lion in your community will be able to touch you. You know, we're talking about the people that their diet is the diet of strong meat. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. What kind of meat were they, were they taking? Strong meat, strong meat that gave them strong faith. You're thinking about Ruth when Opa had left and Naomi said, how about you? Will you not also leave and said, entreat me not to go away from you? The future was bleak and black. It appeared, where am I going to get Osman? In this place, you will get Osman. In this place, you will get wife. But you know, the people who are running to the village, I don't know what happens. I've been praying and praying. I didn't see will of God. My mother, my father, if you see somebody in the village for me, here am I. I said no before, but now I come to say yes. Ah, look at him. 
where you said good night, then you say good evening again. Not me. I said not me. And then they go and get you somebody with mermaid spirit, familiar spirit, that even the villagers will not marry her. And then it's okay, you want wife at all costs. Uh, can you take this one? Anything you give me, anything you give me, I am tired now. And then you bring somebody home. You thought you saw problem before now. Problem has started all over again. I pray that will not happen to you. What is the person I'm talking to today? It will not happen to you in Jesus' name. Rule said, husband or no husband, I'm moving on. Wife or no wife, I am moving on. Child or no child, I am moving on. You will move on. Did she have husband at the right time? And not in refrap, not in nonentity, a real husband, the greatest husband in the land. Boaz, did she have children? I said, did Ruth have children? Uh -huh. Those who are dieting on the strong meat of the world, and they say, well, we will not compromise Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If I decide, I'll put you in that a bonny fairy furnace. Who is that God that will deliver you out of my hand? If you tell somebody like that who is taking milk morning, afternoon, and evening, if you tell somebody who is that God that will deliver you out of my hand, they're taking milk Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and anytime they hear something tough and something deep and something high and something great, then they shrink back. They say, I'm waiting for my bottle of milk. If you tell them like that, who is that God that will deliver you out of my hand, you'll say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I will never say sorry to Satan. I never say sorry to a backslider. I never say sorry to Nebuchadnezzar. I say, heat your furnace and make it seven times hotter. I want to tell you, I will show you I've been dieting on the spiritual and the strong meat of the world. And Nebuchadnezzar was angry, uh -huh, but things will change. I said things will change. And he threw them into the furnace of fire. And you can tell, you can tell, you can tell. Those people have been dieting and eating. They have been digesting the strong meat of the world. While they enter into that fire, they stood up. You will stand up. You will not be burnt off in the fire in your community in Jesus' name. And then they were walking up and down. In that difficulty, you will walk up and down. In that fire, you will walk up and down. In the fairy furnace of Nebuchadnezzar, nothing will touch even a single hair on your head in Jesus' name. And Nebuchadnezzar rose up and he peeped into his fairy furnace. He was looking for ashes, but he saw the Son of God. I said he was looking for the ashes of Shadam, Meshach, and Abednego, but he saw the Son of God. He said, did not we cast three people into the furry furnace? He said, but I see four men. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will be with you. I see four men, and they are not lying down. They are walking in the furry furnace, and the appearance of the fourth one is like, tell me out aloud, the Son of God. Those are the people who have been living and digesting the strong meat for his warriors. Uh, what kind of uh, spiritual food was uh, Peter taking in? Uh, that he was in the prison. He wasn't bothered, no worry, no anxiety. And then the angel came from heaven and tapped him, and he got up. All the chains fell off immediately. You can tell, when you take that strong meat of the world, no matter where they tie you down, you are not a goat. God has given permission to no one to tie you down. You will not be down. The angel of the Lord will touch your life today. All those chains will vanish away in Jesus' name. And he got up. He said, follow me. 
And while he was walking, there was an iron door in front of them. He didn't have to call prayer warriors, come and open the door for me. You will open the door yourself. And then as he got there, the iron gate swung open. They were open. Why? That man had been taking the strong meat of the world, and there was no anxiety. There was, was no worry in his life. And then Paul and Silas, Paul and Silas, they were in the prison. Instead of saying, how could this happen to us? How could we be in a place like this? They have been you can tell the kind of meat they have been taking. You can tell the kind of spiritual food they were taking. They are the strong meat of the world. And they prayed and they sang. And they prayed and they sang. There are people that only sing in the church. They cannot sing in the dungeon. They cannot sing in their bathroom. They cannot sing when they wake up in the morning. They cannot sing in their community. There's no happiness. The only joy they have and the only time they clap is when they're in the church. But now, outside in the bus, you will clap. In your community, you will clap. When you wake up like this, that being a terrible dream, and you wake up, you will sing and clap your hand in Jesus' name. And Paul and Silas, as they began to sing, all the foundations of the prison were shaking. All the windows, all the doors were open, and all their chains fell off. They are falling off. I said they are falling off because they had been taking the strong meat of the world. Stephen. Philip and Priscilla and Aquila, you can tell Mary. Those are the people when you see victory in their lives, victory every day and victory every moment and victory every turn of the way and victory at every crossroad. You can tell they have been taking the strong meat of the world. And as you follow their example and you take the strong meat of the world, your faith will grow. Your power will grow. Your courage will grow. And you live the victorious life in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 12. Hebrews chapter 6. Reading from verse 12. That she be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. You'll inherit the promises. Look at this in Hebrews chapter, chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, reading from verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. You know, if you are eating a strong meat, you know what to refuse. When any gift is coming from Satan, you know what to refuse. When any gift is coming from the oppressor of the people of God, you know what to refuse. When any gift is coming from somebody who does not regard God, does not respect God, and will say, who is that God that will deliver you? You know what to refuse. When any gift is coming from an idol, idol worshiper, when any gift is coming from a shrine, when any gift is coming from people that do not have any respect and any honor for God, you know what to refuse. And because this man has been taking strong meat, strong meat by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, Refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction. Choosing rather to suffer affliction. Look up here. You, you know, sometimes a sickness may come. It's a test of your faith. I pray you'll pass the test. I said, I pray you'll pass the test. You know, sickness comes, and then you pray one time, and it appears there's no healing. Second time, it appears there's no healing, and they don't understand. They have not eaten the strong meat that Elijah took. And Elijah prayed and said, my servant, go and see. He said, I see nothing. You know, for those who are not taking strong meat, that's where they give up. Elijah said, go again. And he went, I see nothing. For those who don't know about strong meat, that's where they give up. Go the third time, and the fourth time, 
and the fifth time and the sixth time tell me now and the seventh time it said now i see you know if you are not taking strong meat you're sick you will not be sick but let's say somebody is sick they are not taking strong milk don't even attend Monday Bible study. All they have is this a little a meal at the bottom of their glass, of their, of their cup. That's all they take. And they see the little milk, no strong meat. And then after they have prayed once or twice or three times and they have not been healed, they say, well, my people now came. And my people said, well, you are prayed. If you are prayed and there's no answer, we'll take you home. And we'll go and do it the traditional way. I say, well, I don't have anything to say. Now you are my people. Wherever you want to take me, take me. And they take him to a shrine. You will not die in a shrine. I said you will not die in a shrine. But you say, eh, take me anywhere you take me. What can I do now? I've called Jesus. There's no power eh, because you are not taking strong meat. I've tried my best, but I'm dying. And before I die, take me there. When I get well, I know this is backsliding, but I will come back. And I've seen some people like that. When they take them like that, they die in the shrine under the protection and the captivity of Satan and occultic people, traditional people. It will not happen to you. I said it will not happen to you. You know what it takes because you are taking strong meat that whatever is happening and your people came and they said, well, your people, I don't recognize you. What do you mean? We're going to take you. Don't touch my body. This is the temple of God. I said this is the temple of God. We will carry you. You cannot carry me. I'm in the hands of Jesus. That person has been taking strong meat and you can tell. And you can tell. And before those people turn around, healing will come upon your life in Jesus' name. But you know, Look at verse 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Choosing rather to suffer. Did he suffer? I said, did he suffer? Ah, there's a man that has the rod. And when he pointed it at the Red Sea, what happened to the Red Sea? Parted. Did he suffer? When he came outside that Red Sea, and then he said, Lord, the people are hungry, and manna came from heaven. Did he suffer? And when there was no water to drink, there was a rock, and he took that rod, and he struck that rock, and water came out for millions of people. Did he suffer? No. But he said, if suffering is necessary, I am ready. Somebody says there, I am ready. That's how you have the strong meat. Now, whatever is happening, you are taking strong meat and you are going to overcome every challenge in your way in Jesus' name. The people have read to you about the fed on strong meat. And they were strong. Feeding on strong meat makes you strong in faith. Makes you strong in the spirit. Makes you strong for spiritual warfare. Makes you strong on the battlefield. Makes you strong for exploits. And makes you strong in prevailing prayers. It makes you strong over all your enemies. You didn't hear that one. You will be strong, stronger than all your enemies in Jesus' name. Living only on milk will weaken warriors on the battlefield improve on your spiritual diet take that sincere milk and then take that strong meat and 
The same power in Enoch will be in your life. That same fiery authority in Elijah will be upon your life. And that faith and confidence in Peter will be in your life. And that consecration of Paul will be in your life in Jesus' name. If you find somebody is always complaining, always murmuring, they didn't do this for me, they didn't give me this, they didn't visit me, they didn't do that. He doesn't know. He is the one to visit other people. He is the one to touch other people's life. If you find somebody murmuring, complaining, has been dieting on milk, milk all the time. But now the meat has come. And you will diet on the meat in Jesus' name. And then, uh, let me tell you what your life will look like. Are you ready? Look at uh, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 37. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Nay, in all these things, how many things? Nay, in all these things, how many things in your life? How many things in your family? How many things your community? In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. More than conquerors. You see there? More than conquerors. Is she there? Where is she? Where is she there? I'll see you again. This power will energize you from your inner man in Jesus' name. First John chapter 4, verse 4. First John chapter 4, verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. I'm talking to overcomers there today. And have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Are you there? I said, great I see that is in you than he that is in the world. What do you need to take that street? You're going here, and then you need to pass across that street. I see a signboard there. And that signboard says, the people, wicked people, were here. They're not even afraid. And they publicize their name. They say, anyone that crosses the place is finished. They're talking to the people who are meat for the devil. They're not talking to you. They're talking to the people who are like a meat for Satan. They're not talking to me. I said they're not talking to me. This is my father's land. Somebody there is saying, this is my father's land. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And they went through all the nations and they went everywhere and they want all those people. He said, touch not my anointed. Touch not my anointed. Are those anointed people there? And do my prophets no harm? I said, are you there? Yeah. Heavenly protection upon your life. Yeah. The wall of fire around you all through your lives in Jesus' name. Yeah. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 13. I'm reading, I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, young women, because ye have overcome the wicked one. Ye have overcome the wicked one. Ye have overcome. Verse 14, I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. And then I have reached unto you, young men, because, because, make it personal, because, make it personal, because you are strong. And the word of God abides in you. And ye have, and ye have, 
personal, personal. And I have overcome the wicked one. You see, those are the people defeating on strong meat. Number three now, the light in the diet of spiritual manner for your own welfare. The light on the diet of spiritual manner for your own welfare. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 8. We're looking at verse 3. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna. And fed thee with what? Manna. Tell me, tell me. And fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that she might make thee to know that man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. Manna, what kind of food is that? We're looking at Psalm 78. Psalm 78. I'm reading here from verse 25. Psalm 78, verse 25. Are you there? Man did eat what kind of food? Angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. What did that accomplish in their lives? In the wilderness, the manna from heaven referred to you as angels' food from heaven. All the dietary needs of the children of Israel were met. Just that manna, angels' food, and all their needs were met. All the tribes took that same manna. All the families took that same manna. All the people took that same manna. The men, the women, the children, all of them were nurtured on that same manna. They didn't say, we're from this tribe. Let the tribe of Judah take the manna. Let the tribe of Reuben take the manna. Let these ones take the manna. But you know, we, we are not, you know, we're coming from that place and that place. Everyone will take the same manna. I said everyone will take the same manna. The men, you'll feed on this heavenly manna. The women, you'll feed on this heavenly manna. The youths, you'll feed on this heavenly manna. The children, you'll feed on this heavenly manna in Jesus' name. What did that do for them? What did that do for them? They were healthy. You'll be healthy. They were strengthened. You'll be strengthened. They were free and fat. Fat and free. Feet and free you'll be fit. Fit for every sin that comes your way. This heavenly manner will make you fit in Jesus' name. Have you noticed that all those people that fed on that heavenly manner, they all had 20-20 vision. 20-20 vision. Sharp sight. Clear sight. The dimness on your sight will vanish away today. Blindness will vanish away today. They ate that manna, and you know, as they were walking in the wilderness, there was nobody that said, any stretcher there, any wheelchair there, any crushes there, because look at my condition, your condition will change. They were vigorous and victorious. Or just on that manner, as you come and you take part in the spiritual manner, angels, food coming from heaven, you'll be victorious and vigorous in Jesus' name. They were safe and sound. I see it on you. I said, I see it on you. Safe and sound, you will be in Jesus' name. 
they were fine and fresh. They were fine and fresh. They were not weary. They were not tired. They were not worn out. They were not bending under a load. It's not like all the load of heaven, the load of the sky is on them. Your shoulders will be up. I said your shoulders will be up. You will be fine. You will be fresh. They were whole. They were whole. They were taking the heavenly food and the manna. And they were whole. They were hale and hearty. Hale and hearty. Somebody there, hail and hearty. Yeah. Feed on the word of God. Feed on the word of God. Feed on the word of God. On the sincere milk, number one. On the strong meat, number two. On the spiritual manner, number three. All your needs will be supplied in Jesus' name. Yeah. Look at Psalm 105. Psalm 105. I'm reading from verse 37. They fed on the, on the manna, and look at the result in their lives. Psalm 105, I'm reading from verse 37. He brought them forth also with silver and gold. Prosperity has come. Your jobs have come. Your needs are supplied. And there was not one feeble person among all their tribes. I need to read that to you again. And there is no one feeble person in all our congregation. Yeah. Where are you? Let your eyeball meet my eyeballs. Power. Yeah. Authority. Yeah. Anointing. Yeah. Impartation. Yeah. And there is no one feeble person in all our congregation. Psalm 107, verse 20. Psalm 107, verse 20. Psalm 107, verse 20. And he sent his word. Where is that word coming? And he sent his word. I say, where is that word coming? And healed them and delivered them from their destruction. You are delivered. You are set free. You are strengthened. You're empowered. You're energized. Your needs are supplied. You're more than a conqueror. You're an overcomer today. You are prospered. And all the needs of your life, they're supplied in Jesus' name. Sincere milk for me. Strong meat. For me, spiritual manner. For me, all the blessings of breakthrough. All the blessings of breakthrough. All my desires. Why are you sitting down then? Stand up in the promise of God. Standing up, standing up. On the promise of God, you cannot fail. And those promises that cannot fail, it is your day. I said it is your day. I said it is your day. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord in your life, the milk has been given. The meat has been supplied and the manna has been made available. It's yours today. It's yours today. It's yours today. It's there. It's there. It's there. It's there. Desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. You are growing in grace. Salvation has come. You are going in grace. Sanctification has come. You are growing in grace. The power of the Holy Ghost has come. You are growing in grace. Authority and anointing has come. You are growing in grace. Heaven has descended today upon your soul upon your heart, upon your spirit. You've got the manna. Desire it. Drink it. Don't dodge it. Don't dilute it. Make it yours. Make it yours. This is the same milk of the water. Take it in. Take it in. 
take it in. Everything you have had today, take it in. Everything you've got today, take it in. Let the word, let the word get into your mind, get into your brain, get into your subconscious, and get into your spirit. Be filled with that word. Be saturated with that word. Lean on that word. Live by that word. Brings victory. Brings forgiveness. Brings freedom. Brings power. Brings strength. It brings courage. Brings vigor. Brings anointing that breaks every yoke. The milk of the world. The meat for the warriors. The meat for the warriors. The meat for the warriors. They start to overcome in every battle of life. The meat for the warriors. Be on the same diet Enoch was on. Be on the same diet Abraham was on. Be on the same diet Moses was on. Be on the same diet Caleb was on. Be on the same diet Elijah was on. Be on that same diet for David, for Daniel. Be on the same diet with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Taking that food. Taking that food. Taking that food. The strong meat of the world. There's a diet Peter fed on. There's a diet Paul and Silas fed on. The strong meat of the world. No wonder they were unconquerable. No wonder they were unbeatable. No wonder they were unstoppable. No wonder they were unbendable. Uncompromising. Incorruptible. Pharaoh could not conquer them. Nebuchadnezzar could not burn them up. Nero could not destroy them. The Sanhedrin could not stop them. Pharisees, Sadducees could not crush them. They were feeding on the strong meat of the world. Be strong. And courageous, mighty, powerful, unconquerable. Surrender your life to Christ and say, Yes, Lord, I surrender. Yes, Lord, I surrender. Yes, Lord, I surrender. And from now on, I'll be taking the undiluted milk of the world. From now on, I'll be feeding on the undiluted milk of the world. The unmixed meat for the warriors and the unearthly manna from heaven. Your welfare now comes to your hand. And your welfare is no more in the hand of somebody that will destroy you, that will stop your journey. Now you're moving on. Now you're moving on in the strength of the Lord, in the power of the Lord. Make up your mind. Take your decision. Don't dodge responsibility. Because now you're strong, and the mighty one, the strong one, dwells and lives inside your heart, inside your life. Tell the Lord, you don't go back to that same stage of weakness, that same stature 
of fearing. And that same situation of being overwhelmed every time. Strong for the battlefield. Strong, mighty, unconquerable because of the diet, the food, the meal that you have taken today and you'll continue to take. Power, heaven sent power is now inside your heart. Courage, firmness, boldness, fearlessness, and the ability to achieve. The Lord has now given it unto you. Believe. And it's done. You ask for salvation, the forgiveness of your sin, restoration. Believe, and it's done. Get up, don't lie down there, move up, don't lie down there, climb up, don't stay in the valley. And the strength of the Lord will uphold you for the rest of your life. In Jesus' name we pray. And the victorious people said, the unconquerable people said the champion of the day, the champion of the week, the champion of the month, the champion of this year, the champion for the rest of your life. Where are you? And the champion said, sin will vanish out of your life. Sickness will vanish out of your life. Satanic affliction will vanish out of your life. All that weakness in your nature, all that weakness in your personality, everything will vanish away in Jesus' name. All the complaints, they are after me, they are after me. They will not be after you now, you will be after them. I said you will be after them. They were chasing me, they were chasing me, turn around and begin to chase them. And begin to chase them. And begin to chase them. All those enemies, they will turn their back, they will run away from you in Jesus' name. Somebody there now, impartation. Somebody there now, I said, impartation. Where are you? Where are you? You need salvation, it's available. Sanctification is available. Power in the Holy Ghost is available. Healing is available. Deliverance is available. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Breakthrough is available. Victory is available. Impartation coming upon your life. Raise up those hands. Father, in Jesus' name. For all those who have surrendered their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ and they have turned away from their sin, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, at this time, forgive them in Jesus' name. Cleanse them in Jesus' name. Restore them in Jesus' name. Let your spirit bear witness in their hearts now that they are saved. Let there be peace of heart, peace in their soul peace in their spirit write their names in the book of life lord i pray for everyone here any sickness there i command sickness come out in jesus name incurable disease uh, 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 uh. you are no more incurable be healed in jesus name 
you've gone to the hospital and they say that this is that and this is that and then you are carrying extra about I destroy that negative thing I pray every sickness every infirmity in your life away in Jesus name Lord let there be a divine touch over there a divine transformation over there take the sicknesses away take the infirmities away Lord from heaven pronounce healing upon everyone healing upon everyone healing upon everyone Lord total deliverance total deliverance every chain that binds you is broken every fetter that binds you is broken and all the curse is taken away from your head on my right over there that curse is broken in jesus name up in that gallery there that curse is taken away in jesus name all that evil spirit that you always see in the dream serpentine spirit that you always see in the dream all those uh, mommy water spirit you always see in the dream i command that thing come out in jesus name all the powers of darkness from the village say to you because you said i will not worship idol i will not worship idol and they said okay you're not going to worship idol then you are going to have this i destroy that thing i pray the fire of the holy ghost the fire of the holy ghost come upon those evil spirit burn them send them away drive them away you're free in Jesus name now impartation for success impartation for promotion impartation for prosperity impartation for your job Lord send your progress and your prosperity upon them in Jesus name impartation for miracle baby Lord, I pray every, every married person were looking for children, looking for children, receive your miracle child in Jesus' name. Husband separated from wife, wife separated from husband by your spirit, by your power, bring them back. You said the two shall be one, bring them back. All that middle wall of separation, demolish it in Jesus' name not for everyone to the left to the right to the front at the bottom on the ground floor and at the gallery anywhere and everywhere impartation for breakthrough impartation for breakthrough impartation for breakthrough everywhere you go doors will open before you doors of opportunity open before you Doors of success open before you. Doors of prosperity open before you. Doors of favor open before you. As you go back, you are going with victory. You are going with success. You are going with your miracle. You are going with divine intervention. Everyone that helps you will turn to a helper. They will not hinder you anymore. I pray that all the blessings you desired today, this week, this month, this year, be overflowing in every life. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen will never stop in your life. Hallelujah <laughs> will never stop in your life. The joy of the Lord and the prosperity of the Lord go with every one of you. Thank you and God bless you.